What's up everybody? It's your good friend Lukey and this is my new YouTube channel. Please subscribe to help me. Look on the screen. Don't be a reoccurring viewer. Only 25% of the people watching these videos are subscribing. Hit the bell icon. Subscribe now, please. What's up everybody? It's your good friend Lukey and we have an emergency breaking news video segment to give to you and that is that Canelo Alvarez put out a statement yesterday on his Instagram basically alluding to that he's coming back September 2023 which is not news but he also put up the logo of the Premier Boxing Champions which is news because no one knew that he was going to be working with PBC in that capacity it appears according to Mike Coppinger there's a three fight deal in place it appears that his first fight will be with Jamal Charlo, who's coming off a two-year hiatus from the sport of boxing. He's the current WBC middleweight champion. More than likely, he's probably going to vacate his WBC middleweight title because the interim WBC champion, Carlos Adamis, is fighting this Saturday against Julian J. Rock Williams. He'll probably get elevated. The winner of that fight will probably get elevated to the WBC middleweight champion, and Charlo will campaign to try to be a three-division world champion and attempt to become the undisputed world champion. Big story here is the divided nature of boxing. Rather than be excited then Canelo is getting a great fight against Charlo, it's interesting, it's an interesting guy, you know, Canelo hasn't been looking the greatest in his last fights, Charlo's moving up in weights, but he's a bigger guy than most of the middleweights in the division, you could arguably say he's the biggest one, but there's some X factors for both guys. Is Canelo regressing? Can Charlo move up off a two-year hiatus and still be the same fighter? It's compelling in a lot of different ways, and Charlo has an interesting personality that translates to a lot of different people. It's a great fight, interesting fight. What I think is more interesting is the fact that this possibly ushers in fights with David Benavidez, who I feel like most of the world is calling for Canelo to fight. David Morrell, one of the most exciting emerging contenders in the sport of boxing, as well as Errol Spence Jr., who said it himself on a Dallas Cowboys YouTube video that he feels more comfortable fighting at middleweight and that possibly after fighting Terrence Crawford and going through these fights, he's going to go to middleweight, a weight that he feels more comfortable making and fighting at. And Canelo Alvarez is a name that he's been calling out for years. It feels like that's the kind of world we live in with some possibilities of maybe a Demetrius Andre, and then maybe a form of a light heavyweight or a cruiserweight might get mixed in there. One thing I want to talk about is the divided nature of boxing right now. We have created boxing promoters into sports franchises. So now we have fans that are, I'm all in on Matchroom, I'm all in on Top Rank, I'm all in on PBC. And really, my friend Mike Leaf, great Twitter follow and great human being as well, said it best on Twitter. And let's screen cap it and put his tweet in there right now. There you go, that's Mike Lee. He's good. Give him a follow too if you don't follow him on Twitter because he is one astute dude. But what you need to know about this is it's the fighters themselves that make the compelling fights. Yes, the promotion gives us the theatrics that get us extra excited, that gives us that little uh, joy of getting a birthday present in the morning and you wake up so giddy because you know you're getting something that you're just so excited to have. But really, the fighters fight the fights. The fighters make the fights. Different telecasts appeal to different people. That's like how different people appeal to different people. I try to be the best representation of myself, yet sometimes I fail myself and certain people don't find me appealing for whatever way. Not everyone's going to like everyone. It's not an indictment of your character. It's not an indictment of who you are as a man or a woman. It's just the way it is. And I think that when Canelo is doing this deal with the PVC, it speaks to the fractured nature of boxing, where rather than looking at, wow, we're going to get some good fights, it's the reactionary nature of, what does Eddie Hearn think about this? What does Golden Boy think about this? What does this mean for the landscape of boxing? Honestly, as a fight fan, who really cares? I think that all of those promotions are going to be good because there's always going to be emerging fighters. If you're Matchroom, who'd been putting on a lot of Canelo's fights, what better opportunity for someone like Diego Pacheco or Edgar Berlanga to have to step up and now become a force in the sport of boxing? If you're a competitor to Canelo, um, like a golden boy that used to promote him, there's a guy named Aaron Silva, there's Virgil Ortiz. What better chance now to try to see if these fighters can emerge and get their name up to that level? We're looking for the next guy in the sport of boxing. 
we haven't quite found that leader of the next generation. It quite possibly could be Gervonta Tank Davis, but we're looking for that truly, and I know this might annoy some people, but that legacy-defining fight. Tank really needs the legacy-defining fight. I think that he really is gunning for those type of fights as well, but he needs the legacy-defining fight. What this just basically means to me is Canelo's probably on the last three fights of his career. Maybe he does a one-off after this, and he got offered a great deal with really interesting fights that he felt could be larger than light spectacles. And it's great. PBC gets a lot of bash. People love to name call and potty mouth PBC. But look, they've put on some great cards this year. They put on Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia. They're putting on Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. And more than likely, they're putting on Canelo versus Jamal Charlo. Those are fights that move the sport forward. So, what I would challenge anyone that looks at this signing is, does this move the sport of boxing forward and does this get fans excited? I think it does wholeheartedly. And I think it, it is a net positive. And I would encourage people to let's not think along the lines of promoters. Let's think along the lines of how does this benefit as us as a consumer? And I think it's a great benefit for us if Canelo's going to fight on this platform and challenge some of the best fighters of the era to potentially close out his career because that's going to give us possibly a passing of the torch moment or further his greatness as one of the best Mexican fighters of his era. If you enjoy this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the boop thumbs up, and leave a comment if you just think I'm ugly or stupid. Until next time, it's Lukey.